For pretty much my whole life, I've been involved in hockey. From minor and junior hockey, officiating, heck, I even drove a Zamboni and made ice for a few years. And I still play the game to this day. I worked video production for Hockey Canada for a few years, including the 2010 Vancouver Olympics, and then was manager of video production for the Edmonton Oilers for five seasons. When I helped document the construction of Rogers Place in Edmonton, I developed a fascination on how these buildings come together. I visited 34 NHL rinks, and after my time in the NHL, I decided to start this YouTube channel to share with you all that I've learned about them. Who knows, you may just learn something new before you head to your next hockey game. I'm Jeff Nash and this is Rinks Around the League. Hey everyone, welcome to Rinks Around the League. I'm your host Jeff Nash and on this episode I'm going to watch videos of Zamboni fails <laughs> and uh, kind of break them down and go into what I think is going on in these videos. I bought this little uh, toy <laughs> to kind of demonstrate some, some things uh, on some of the videos that we're gonna watch. Just a general overview, I'm gonna kind of go over a really a quick review of what a Zamboni is. First off, I, should must, I must say that, you know, the Zamboni is, is the common brand, if you will. Uh, it's an ice resurfacer. There's other makes and models out there. The two most common in uh, North America are Olympias. And Zambonis. You know, it's kind of like uh, Chevy and Ford. You know, a lot of people, uh, if they've driven an Olympia, they'll swear by it. Um, if you've driven a Zamboni like myself, you think they're uh, they're full of it, and it's really the Zamboni. That's that's the <laughs> the machine that you you're supposed to be driving when doing ice hockey. Um, and they both generally work the same. They have this, the same principles and the same kind of uh, uh, anatomy, if you will. Anyways. Let's talk about the actual parts of the Zamboni. So obviously uh, you have tires, four tires. Uh, it's a front wheel uh, uh, steering uh, machine and the tires actually have studs on them. The part on the back that actually goes onto the ice and you often see uh, a rag out the back and the water coming out, this is called the conditioner. And there's several parts in the conditioner. Again, Olympia and Zamboni are, are generally the same thing but they have, um, underneath they have a blade. In a Zamboni, you have two augers. You have a horizontal auger, which is on the conditioner. And what augers are, are basically giant corkscrews that spin really, really fast. And that's what actually forces the snow or the ice uh, to accumulate to a point where it can actually travel up the vertical auger and it goes into the snow, snow uh, box. Now the snow box is inside, that's where all the ice and snow goes into. And that's generally how Zamboni cleans the ice. Now it takes snow off and it also lays water down. And on this toy, uh, they actually have the hot water pipe that actually goes down the middle of the conditioner and out the back. And the back pipe here actually has little holes in it. The hot water comes down, it splashes on the back of that uh, back panel there, falls onto the ice. And then there's actually a rag that's not on this toy, but there's a little white rag uh, that you see on the back. And that's what actually smooths the water uh, out onto the ice. Now, again, uh, the model is pretty basic, but uh, your engine, everything's up front here. And the actual water tanks um, are actually in, in the back underneath the, uh, the snow box. So anyways, generally speaking, that's, that's uh, the anatomy of a, of a Zamboni. Now let's check out some fails because if you just Google uh, Zamboni fails <laughs> on YouTube or whatever, uh, you're gonna find some pretty epic uh, machine breakdowns. And part of that is just, you know, general wear and tear on the, on the machine. Um, sometimes it's not uh, doing enough maintenance on them. Uh, but in the NHL, typically they'll have two to three Zambonis on site. Old Rexall Place, old, old Northlands Coliseum, they actually had three machines and they use two, utilize two machines during a game day and they kind of have a spare as a backup. Anyways, let's dive into it because uh, there's some interesting videos. So let's, let's get out of here. I remember seeing this, uh, I believe this is the Outdoor Classic, one of the first Outdoor Classics. And they are offloading, <laughs> they're offloading the Zamboni. There's a couple things I'm wondering here. One, uh, you know, if you're the operator, going off the back of a flatbed like that, your depth perception might be off. But what the heck is the guy shooting the video doing? <laughs> Obviously you can see he's about to drive off and the, the 
it's not down a, a flush against the the ground so i don't i don't know who shot the video and why they are screaming hollering telling this guy to stop i don't know why but uh in any case you know what, what kind of damage would this do obviously it would do a little bit of damage would it render the machine unusable i don't know the conditioner is hitting the ground at a great you know great impact so you know obviously that blade is is and the augers down there now the augers uh you know they run on like a pipe with kind of a corkscrew so obviously if that's bent that's really gonna mess you up um and you probably won't be able to use it so and there's other people watching him too you know they didn't scream or holler and wave at him so i don't i don't know what happened there now i remember seeing this when this happened and this is almost a nightmare situation uh, for a Zamboni driver. There's a lot of jokes about there that it ran over somebody or it's bleeding. And what's actually happened here is a, is a hydraulic hose is, has burst. I'm going to guess that it's the hydraulics system that actually controls the uh, operation of the augers and the uh, conditioner. Hydraulic fluid is red. But anyways, it looks like he went down, he's done his outside passes, he's going down the middle and something has blown and he stopped and he's now trying to back the machine up and off the ice. There's a, there's a few things that you have to wor be worried about here. One is the heat of the hydraulic fluid. Uh, the hydraulic fluid is, is obviously hot, it's warm, and there's a lot there. You can see it's pooled quite a bit there. And you're just worried about it melting through the ice. He's backing up and he's not going over um, the, the part that he just did. My, you know, at this at this stage, it's kind of a minor thing, but it is a veteran move because you're you're basically pouring the hydraulic fluid over the ice that you're going to be taking off anyways, and you're not putting it on uh, the fresh um, the fresh ice. So you know he's he's trying his best to kind of mitigate <laughs> the damage here, but obviously you can see the steam running coming out of the exhaust, which is not normal. Um, so there's there's obviously a huge malfunction there, and the ice crew knows that. So he's trying to get off as soon as possible. Uh, and oh, look at that pool there, right on the gold crease too. You may think, okay, well, they can just squeegee it up and, and you know, try to pick it up somehow. Uh, there, there's a couple of challenges with that because obviously hydraulic fluid, um, you know, doesn't really mix well with water. So it's not like you can take a Zamboni and, and Try to clean it up and i think i read in the comments that the, the game was delayed for by a few hours and that totally makes sense because you know you're not only dealing with a busted up machine uh, but you also have to worry about getting that fluid off the ice because that would kind of mess up all the floods for the remaining of the night because you would have that fluid right you'd also have to fix the ice because i don't know how deep that fluid uh, melted the ice but it's going to make a big soft spot and that's that's tricky because you have to basically try to build that back up to uh, the depth that you need for game time but yeah it says it was delayed for a few hours not surprising it would take some time to to rebuild that but uh that's a pretty epic fail that's that's the one i think everyone especially zamboni drivers we've we've all seen that one that one's pretty uh pretty epic showing a few years ago this guy this person comes out on the, on the Olympia here, it does a, starts doing a flood. Obviously there's a hydraulic leak and then it bursts in the flames. <laughs> and then he just drives around and it's, you know, it's no big deal, it's on fire. And then I, he just turns the corner and then guns it and make, I mean, look at that. That thing is, oh God, this, this person, like, oh my God. And then he drives it all the way back into where he, he he, you know, back into the into the shop there. So this one, you know, got a lot of airtime uh, because you know they they praised the Zamboni driver. Or I guess I should say Olympia driver uh, for saving ice time and do you know doing what it takes to save you know hockey for the kids and stuff. And there's a lot going on in this clip. So again, uh, I've never driven a, an Olympia before. There's some some clues here as to maybe what what went on, and also the the driver. I don't know. I, I don't know if he's necessarily a hero. I mean, maybe if you're playing hockey, but I mean, with that mess on the ice, that that would have taken a long time to clean up. There's no way that ice session would have went ahead anyways. So 
Um, it, the driver definitely had cojones <laughs> to, to drive with a machine on fire back to that, but I'm, I'm gonna make some points here that why I think this is actually kind of dangerous, but let's, uh, let's go back and review the tape here a little bit. Let's, let's look at the top here. So at the beginning here, you see the Zambo, or they see the Olympia come, and he's doing like this kind of pivot. And actually, when we watch towards the end, you can see where the guy was driving out. So he must have been coming out of the gate backwards because he's coming out backwards and he's, he guns it and he, he's, you can see the machine kind of flip around, right? It's kind of flipping around, so now it's facing forward. You know, I, I can't see a score clock here or a time of day clock on here. So I don't know what time it is. So maybe he was uh, late on this flood. Maybe he needed to get out and do the flood in a hurry. I do see kids on the benches. Um, so maybe it was, uh, you know, he's running behind and he needed to get out. Making a pretty aggressive move with the machine. Driving, driving a, an ice resurfacer, just like any vehicle, the more stress you put on a vehicle, it, it, things are, about to fa are bound to fail. And what I kind of would guess happens here is, you know, he's coming out in reverse and he's gunning it and he's gunning it in a way that when he stops and throws it into drive, it's pivoting around. Maybe the stress, uh, you know, made a, made a pipe burst here. But this is, where, this is where I don't truly understand what happens here. So typically when you're doing a flood, my pattern, I would drive up to kind of the blue line, put the conditioner down, uh, dial the blade down to see how much ice you're taking off and then throw the water on and by the ringette line um, you're kind of set ready to go and then you you know you put your board brush out and you start doing your 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 uh, pattern and just out of habit when you put the conditioner down and you start dialing down the blade you're looking down at the ice behind you uh, the depth of your blade like how how deep is it and if you look on the video this person I don't know, maybe he wasn't looking at the ice, but if you look, like the hydraulic hose bursts almost like before the red line. So, you know, and that's why I think maybe he shoved it into to drive and just gunned it because it's not, it's almost right after that, that that, that hose bursts. And so the conditioner, he's putting it down, but he's also looking behind him. And I don't understand, like, I don't understand. You look behind, you're looking down. Maybe he was looking more horizontally instead of down at the ice. But that's the way I would do it is, you know, you're putting the conditioner down, you're looking behind, you're getting ready to dial down and you see a trail of red. I'm stopping right there because that is just, it could be completely disastrous. And it was disastrous for him. You can see him look down. He doesn't notice it. And then he continues to look around. Now he's, you know, he's looking uh, towards the boards, which you're supposed to do. You know, you're probably engaging the uh, the board brush and you're, you're kind of lining up the, the machine to run parallel with the boards. So you can see him look down <coughs> and you can see uh, flames coming out that left-hand side. And then it kind of boils up and it comes right up almost by his leg or by the fuel there, by the augers. I'm not sh exactly sure where the source or where the, where the pipe has broken, but obviously there's a major malfunction here and the fire is all in towards the back. Now there's, it's concerning for a lot of reasons. One, that's where all the fuel tanks are kept. So uh, Zamboni's Olympias, the person driving the Zamboni, the operator sits on one side closest to the boards and the fuel tanks are basically right beside you. And there's two of them. Now they're both would be open and there's a little valve that you can switch back and forth because you, when you run out of uh, fuel on one, you swap over to the next tank. And this fire is happening right by the fuel tank. So if you watch it, it keeps going. The fire is, I mean, engulfing that side of the machine. He obviously realizes, oh crap, I got to get out of here. And so his first instinct is to get the machine off the ice. The flames get worse. The spilling of the hydraulic fluid is getting worse. 
and he's gunning it and the fire is getting worse. And even though you're, you know, when you're a Zamboni driver, you're, you're covered head to toe, you're probably wearing steel toe boots. You know, he obviously had a hat on, looks like he had a hoodie on. So, <coughs> you know, he might have had overalls underneath, but you know, you're, he's generally covered head to toe, uh, but that cannot be comfortable. That is very dangerous. Not knowing this arena setup, um, most rinks in, in cities kind of have a twin arena setup, and typically there's two ice sheets, right? And then in the middle is kind of where the Zamboni shop is, and that's where the Zamboni will come in. That's where the snow pit is, that's where the water is. Typically, at least in my own building, uh, that's where all the compressors are. So the Zamboni storage room, I have a little, I'm a little bit concerned that he, the, his instinct was, I gotta get it back into the shop. Um, because you put it back in there, let's say for instance, uh, it's a fire that you can't put out and the Zamboni just becomes engulfed. Now you got the Zamboni in the back shop area where there's a lot of other combustible items. You're more in, in an enclosed space because it's not, you're not in an arena, you're in you know, kind of like a shop setup. And there's just obviously a lot more things that can catch on fire. And not only that, um, a lot, there's a lot of exposed pipes, but there's also a lot of uh, pipes that carry ammonia that goes uh, back and forth to the compressors, uh, you know, are very dangerous. You don't want fire around that. So, you know, I had, I had issues with this driver who, you know, was praised online. Oh my God, you know, they did a, a really good job and who knows, right? If given the situation, maybe that would have been my first reaction. But what I think what I would have done in that situation right there is A, when I'm putting the conditioner down, I look behind and I see a, a hydraulic leak. I'm shutting her down right there and I'm getting back to the shop. Now, I don't know if it would have changed anything. It might still have caught on fire, uh, but I would have instantly recognized, oh crap, something's wrong. Uh, this person, I don't know if they saw, they didn't know, but they continued on basically in the lineup for, the, for their flood and then it caught on fire and then it got worse. Now, there are people in the rink. So maybe his first instinct was, I gotta get this machine off. I gotta get away from people. Um, what I can say is, pro at least in my opinion, the safest spot to actually have a Zamboni fire is probably right smack dab in the middle of the arena. You know, you're, if you put it at center ice, you hop off the machine, you go back to the shop to get a fire extinguisher, you come out, you put out the fire, I mean, at that point, yeah, maybe you're trying to save the ice time. Maybe you're trying to, um, you know, get the machine away from as many people as you can. I, I would think that if I was in that situation, that's what I would have done. I would have just drove it to the middle of the ice, shut the engine off, run back to the shop, grab the a fire extinguisher, put out the fire and then deal with everything afterwards. People on, in the comments were like, oh my God, he saved the ice time. I bet you the, the next people out on ice <clears throat> we're, we're grateful that um, it didn't ruin their ice time, but I'm guaranteeing that it ruined their ice time anyways, because all of that hydraulic fluid on the ice, that would have taken probably hours to, to clean up. The guy had guts, I'll give him that, to drive a Zamboni on, with that much fire around and, and still be able to drive off. Like that's, he had a lot of guts, I'll give him that. Um, but I, I don't necessarily think it was the safest move those of you who have driven as Zamboni's, what would you do um, given that situation? But uh, anyways, just a crazy, uh, you know, s scenario playing out there. And it's, I'm glad no one got hurt. That's the most important thing. Anyways, that's uh, my review on some of the Zamboni fails that exist on YouTube. Uh, if you are a Zamboni driver and you have video of you or your buddies you know, having issues with the machine, send them my way. Uh, you can follow me on social at underscore the ranks on Twitter and Instagram. Hit me up with a DM, send me some videos. Uh, don't tell me what happened. Just show me the uh, oopsies and I will, I will take my stab at thinking of what actually happened. If you're a Zamboni driver and you think I'm way off base, let me know in the comments down below. I, I think I have a pretty solid grasp on, on kind of how things 
shake down, but I don't know everything. So if you are a, a ice resurfacer operator yourself and you watch and you think I'm totally off base, let me know in the comments. I'm always up for a debate, uh, but that's kind of what I saw and kind of my breakdown of what I saw happening. Anyways, that was a fun video. Um, if you have videos, send them my way. I'd love to, to take a stab at it and, and see more fails, but uh, yeah, there's more videos coming down the line. Uh, hit me up on social at underscore the ranks uh, on Twitter and Instagram. And I'm also, believe it or not, on TikTok. I'm giving it a shot. We'll see what happens. But uh, anyways, thanks for watching, everyone. We'll see you next time.